stuff like these. So we delete these, which is the detailing. We'll, we go with this one, delete the innards, and we'll fake this detail with just literally extruding this 3.2, like we did, and deleting this. And we already have solid. Same with this. Grabbing the inner edge, pulling, come on. And it's flush flat. Means again, the beautiful baking. Ramp that holds it. Good. Oh, yeah. Innards of this. Let's make a custom like this. Delete the inner edge. Uh, something is wrong. Yeah, it's the inner part again. And now we got a solid piece again. Really cool. Bolt, bolt, bolt. Done. Done. The doors. Bake stuff. Again. I think we're almost done with the low poly. Yeah. Solid stuff. And, <laughs> and now the dreaded UV map. Really want to show it how awful this is. Why is it awful? It's boring. It's so repetitive. It's so stupid. But <laughs> it's what you can't go without, sadly. So what we do in UV mapping is we pretty much want to display a 3D object on a flat surface. How we do that, you may ask? It's quite simple, actually. If you cut a single edge, just like a globe, you get projection. And now this is a mess, so we just want blue colors. But if we cut it proper like this, cut these extra edges, we're already getting to some shape we want. And then we cut the flooring in total, we get this single face is now projected just into here. But if we want to do it far better, we would actually use the boundary loop of this. Keep the keep just one side so it's connected, and we already got semi-decent like part we could still do better with this but it's a good start so now we're pretty much checking what's up with it well um uh so the inner box as well should be cut which means something is not good yeah it's still connected directly gotta find it where maybe here okay separated and now we have to fix this thing quite easy you grab the exterior edges and you grab the exterior frame and you get a really nice plus sign. And it's so blue means it's really good. Uh, then we got the frame itself. Since uh, UVs don't like harsh edges like these, 45 or 90, we just cut them on the below and on the top frame like this. And you get Again, this really nice piece and above should be the same if it's not connected, but we left two edges here and now we got everything blue besides these boxes, which I think are bolt holes. Yeah, same thing. We use all of the exterior edges. What this grants us is literally like how this works is let me just show it in an actual example. So when I cut the edges. What the projection does is it cuts literally the faces. Let's put this to the active element. It actually does this. So if we grab this, it actually flattens the whole thing for the UV projection like this. Come on, work with me. Pretty much what it does so that's pretty much uv projection for you it just flattens on the way of the cuts you determine so i've determined the outer edges it does exactly that on the uv itself uh, and that's how pretty much 3d goes to 2d it's a really crucial part to get right otherwise you get jagged edges uh stretching everything you you notice in games that looks mad is pretty much your fault of just laziness or bad uv or texturing so we go onwards uh let's see what's missing 
Uh, we could do better on these edges, for instance. And we can actually connect them to the main main part of the edge, which will now feature standard beveling, which we solve by cutting this edge. The side edge, that is. Would be these. Yeah, so now this is far more better because it's far flatter. Uh, this is solid. Triangulate this just to see if there's any issues. 88. Sounds good. This one, we can actually connect, cut this and connect it to the sides. Just one side, I guess. Yeah, just one side. This is fine. This is fine. This is alone. We don't want it to be alone. So let's just cut this and remove this. It should be stretched now. Yeah. And we just have to remove these faces here. The beautiful face. Sounds good. Other part of the lamppost. We see if we have hidden edges. We don't. Uh, Cool thing we can do actually with this is use a projection, which means taking all of the front faces for the LODs later on. Why don't you work? Come on. Something is up with the project. What's happening? Look at this. Ay, ay, ay. I'll hide you. Ah, I know what's up. Okay. If we do this, this, and use the main face, we can actually cut a projection from you. And when we, now it's overlapping, but when we cut it, like when we flatten this out, like this, it will still look like bolts without these, all of the extra sorters. Uh, we actually keep this. Again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to interrupt my rambling. Uh, okay, let's hide the space. Forming the edges, so we got these blue lines like these. Uh, we can hide them as well now. Now we have this somewhat complex stuff and easily sorted using the again boundary loop of the surrounding edges. Uh, let's just cut these two first. We got two nice faces, but we want to keep the amount of island. So every face like this island, we want to keep them as low as possible. Uh, so we'll remove the edges of these as well. So by removing the edges, we, we reduce stretching like this. So we can combine this one and this one. If we cut it on top, but allow it to combine on the sides, we got now a single island which pretty much works until we get here, which means we didn't cut something. And that's again, since it it's in a 90 degree angle, we pretty much have to cut this up. So everything that is around 90 should be pretty much cut. Uh, besides that, just cut it, see what we got. Now we got a really nice edge and we can maybe fit the final piece. We can't, it's severely overlapping here means he's gonna be alone uh yeah we got that sorted this is the main face we said we can't combine but we should combine it with this if we mark this where are you oh we got issues here you know what about now don't have issues okay no so this is fixed but this part is funky. We can cut it on the corners. We should get something blue. Cut it here. We got one blue. Cut it here. We got the second blue. I like it. This is quite optimized. Uh, but where's the second one? We have the first. Where's this one? Okay, we can do this better. Uh, we can cut these, combine these, and then combine this here. Perfect. Okay, far better. And yeah, pretty much these lamps, just doing the super simplification of them so we can bang them. 
Uh, just for short preview, let's actually do a quick UE. So not manually, just to show you the baking process. Uh, new folder, wait. Look at light high. We'll just set it to aisle. Look at light uh, low, actually, just to show you how it looks baking wise. Uh, and do you use the high? Baking high to showcase all of the detailing I spoke about. Could be a mess. Let's try it. Uh, so, bake group, low. No, give me the source file. Okay. Hide the high poly uh, bake. So the, the 16 samples, uh, 2K is fine. Let's try to bake it. Uh, errors because of UV. Let's ignore that for a reason since it's not done. But as you can see, uh, pretty much what we're doing is doing false edges. Uh, and in game, this is the model loaded, but if we load the texture, it looks like a false edge, which pretty much means a smooth edge. Uh, same thing with this. Since it's a bad UV, it now looks corrupted, but you can actually try to fix it manually. Mm -hmm. If we paint this queue, uh, if we paint the skew like this, so it knows which direction it's taking, uh, it fixes it a bit. But since we don't have a proper UV, it is what it is, just to show you. Let's bake it again. And this is pretty much the false edging we're talking about. We can make a lot of false details just with this texturing. Uh, but as I said, it requires really good UVs, uh, otherwise the bake will look absolutely awful. Good example is these edges as well. Looks quite rounded here without adding any vertices. You can actually showcase that. Where's the wireframe? Same camera. Mm. I have no idea where the wireframe is, probably because I don't use it here. Yeah. Uh, but anyhow, that's pretty much the what we're aiming for for any of our props. Same with this. This literally line, again, baked. Well, the mesh is super simple. And yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to showcase. We're doing the lamps, which will be done, I think, by Friday, uh, maybe even today. We'll see how it goes. These three concepts, the B and C have failed. And the second lamp is, as always, just a simple street lamp, which uses solar as an additional energy and not directly informed well, that's it for this stream i'm gonna go eat i'm gonna go rest and then do more work uh this was just a small showcase until i get my streaming setup ready and then we'll just go for a few hours rambling thanks for coming everyone that's pretty all much right it. thanks guys appreciate it My name is Walter Hartwell White. I live at 308 Negra Arroyo Lane, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87104. This is my confession. If you're watching this tape, I'm probably dead. Murdered by my brother-in-law, Hank Schrader. <laughs>